Hi there and welcome back to the geodynamics lectures on measuring stress and strain. This lecture, the third lecture in this series, um, will focus on what is strain. It's a rather simple question and this should be a rather simple lecture. We have only one goal and that is to introduce strain and how to calculate some of the basic strain quantities and we'll get into calculating strain quantities in a little bit more detail in the next two lectures. So starting with the question for the lecture, what is strain? Well, we can make the basic definition here that strain is the change in shape or size of a body during deformation. And so strain is the result of stress. So when we apply stress to a material, it could be compression that squeezes the material. Strain is the result it's what happens to the material when acted upon by stresses or forces. So, now we're going to try something experimental in this um, video lecture. We're going to play, and we're going to play with a material called Silly Putty. It comes in these nice little red eggs. And Silly Putty, if you've never seen it before, is kind of a gummy putty substance. I'll pull out a piece here and it looks something like chewing gum. It's actually a nice, fun material to play with when you talk about how the Earth deforms because it has some interesting rheological properties that we'll look at later on in the course. But with our silly putty, we can do some basic experiments on strain. So for example, one thing I could do here is I could apply a stress to this piece of silly putty and start to pull it apart. And as I start to pull it apart, of course, it starts to get longer and stretch and to thin out a little bit as it's being stretched and I'm just gradually pulling it apart. If I stop moving my hands, you'll actually notice that the silly putty starts to kind of bend down. And that's of course because it's not strong enough to support its own weight under the acceleration of gravity. So it's starting to kind of dip down. So I can take my silly putty ball and go to the opposite end of the, uh, the spectrum here. I'll make another little silly buddy um, stick here or whatever. It's a little bit harder to do, but I could also take this thing and squeeze it together now. Here if I start pushing, what you'll see is that the silly putty piece, hopefully you can see it, starts to get sort of squished together and a little bit thicker. In this case it kind of folded up a little bit because it's not a perfectly designed experiment. But the idea is that we can play around with this silly putty material and get a sense of how strain works and you'll get some opportunities maybe to play with this silly putty yourself later on in the course. It's kind of fun stuff to play with. Okay, so playtime's over now and back to work. Back to our question, what is strain? Now, to answer that question, we're going to take a look now at this figure that's shown at the top of the slide from the Turcott and Schubert Geodynamics textbook. Here you can see two boxes, one labeled before, the other labeled after. And in this case, we're looking at a parcel of rock that is a width of dx, a height of dy, and a depth of dz. So these are simply the physical dimensions of this little cube of rock or rectangular uh, block of rock. And if we apply a compressive stress to each one of these faces of this block and applying it just normal to the faces, uh, we, we see a reduction in the length of each side of the parcel. So for instance, along the x-axis here, we see a reduction from an original length of dx to dx minus epsilon xx times dx. And so the epsilon xx is the normal component of strain along the x-axis. This is simply the change in length of that side of the material divided by its original length. So similar to the x axis, we can do exactly the same thing along the y axis or z axis. If we look at the y axis here, we see that the uh, length of our material along the y axis has been reduced and it decreases from uh, dy to dy minus epsilon yy times dy and the same applies to the z axis. So along the y axis we can call epsilon yy the component of normal strain along that axis and the same would apply then for the z axis with epsilon zz being the component of normal strain along the z axis. 
The convention that is used is that the normal strains are positive if they shorten the length of one of the sides of the cube or whatever the material is you're considering. So as it was mentioned earlier in this video lecture, it's easy to calculate strain along any of the axes as simply the change in length of the material along that axis divided by its original length. Or in other words, if you consider it just in 1D, it's often given as delta L divided by L. Change in length divided by the original length. And if we sum together the epsilon xx plus epsilon yy plus epsilon zz, the three components of normal strains, those are known as the dilatation, and that gives you a sense of the volumetric change of the material as a result of deformation, and dilatation is going to be positive if the volume of the material decreases, and that goes along with our convention of positive strain values representing a shortening of the material along one of the axes. So now it's time to take a look at a rather unfortunate example. My poor, delayed lunch. So in a tragic accident while preparing for class frantically, of course, I've dropped my geodynamics textbook onto my lunch and flattened it. And if I estimate that my tasty cheeseburger, as you can clearly see in the picture, was initially about six centimeters thick, and now it's only four centimeters thick, the first question I'd like to pose to you is what is the vertical normal strain? So go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to do your calculation and we'll come back and take a look and see if you got it. Okay, let's see what you've come up with for my poor suffering cheeseburger. What I hope you saw was that based on our calculations from before, the change in thickness of the material or the vertical strain in this case is simply the change in length two centimeters, divided by the original thickness, which was six centimeters, or one-third then for the value for the vertical strain, vertical normal strain. Now if I estimate that as a result of this textbook falling on my cheeseburger, that the cheeseburger is now 50% wider, I could ask another question, and that is what is the dilatation in this case? So again, go ahead and pause the video and make your calculation, and come back and let's see what you get. Okay, so let's see what you've come up with. All we have to do to calculate dilatation in this case is simply sum up the normal um, strains along the three different axes of this three-dimensional cheeseburger. If it's 50% wider, um, that's going to represent a negative strain of one-half. So you should get something that is minus one-half for the x-axis plus one-third for what happened with the shortening along the y-axis, and then minus one-half along the z-axis, or a total dilatation of minus two-thirds. So, in spite of this horrible thing happening to my cheeseburger, it's actually increased in volume. All right, so it's once again time to take your quiz and see what you've learned. We'll come back after this and start taking a look at some of the more detailed calculations regarding normal and shear strains.